In this video, I'm going to be upgrading this Blueberry tray loading iMac G3 to a PowerPC G4 CPU. Now, I actually got this machine off Craigslist many, many years ago uh, for only $15. And uh, of course, it is a fully working system. Uh, but uh, yeah, in this video, I'm just going to remove the original G3 CPU, which is a 333 MHz PowerPC G3 CPU and uh, we're going to be upgrading it to a G4. Now, this process is slightly more involved than other G4 upgrades, such as the G4 upgrade on the iBook G3 clamshell or the uh, PowerBook G3 Pismo, uh, but it is nonetheless still fully doable. So, uh, as you can see, I have the machine in sleep mode here, so I'll go ahead and wake it up, and I'll go ahead and show you the current system specs. I hear that the hard drive is quite noisy here. All right, so the system is now awake, so we can go ahead into about this computer, uh, and then you can see it's got uh, 256 megabytes of system memory installed. Um, we can also go into Apple System Profiler, um, and we can take a look at uh, the CPU. So as you can see there, uh, it is currently running a PowerPC G3 CPU at 333 MHz. And uh, so yeah, what we're going to be doing in this video, like I said, is removing the G3 CPU and installing the G4. Now, since I kind of wanted to keep this machine original, uh, at least have the option of keeping it original, I actually ended up getting a second CPU card for it. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, the CPUs in the tray loading IMAX uh, are on cards like this and uh, they can be removed and replaced. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just upgrade the CPU on this card to a G4 and uh, then install it into the machine and we will have a G4 upgraded iMac G3 uh, tray loader. And uh, this will work on any iMac G3 first gen, uh, the Bondi Blue or any of the other colors uh, revisions A, B, or C. Uh, they're all compatible with G4 upgrades using this method. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this card to a G4. And uh, from there, we can go ahead and install it into this machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started with the process. And uh, before we actually start desoldering the CPU, there is uh, another thing that needs to be done with this card first. And uh, that is changing the v-core of the cpu the v-core voltage i should say um, so if your cpu card like this one has a cpu that looks like this this is actually a uh, motorola mpc 750 uh, and this is a 233 megahertz card as you can see right there um, this cpu is designed to have a core voltage of 2.7 volts or it might be 2.6 somewhere around there um, I believe the actual core voltage that I measured on this uh, when I was testing it in the machine was 2.7. Um, and that voltage needs to be changed in order to get this, uh, to install a G4 CPU on this and have it not overheat or fry itself. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the G4 that we're going to be installing to this board, uh, which is a PowerPC uh, or a um, Motorola, uh, what is it, XPC 7, 7400. Um, that CPU can handle a maximum of, I believe, 2.1 volts. So if we were to put this on this board without changing the voltage from 2.7 volts, it would uh, either run extremely hot or just fry the chip entirely. And of course, we don't want that to happen. Um, so after doing a lot of uh, testing and a little bit of looking around on the board, I actually figured out what controls the CPU vCore voltage on one of these cards. So we'll go ahead and take a look closely at the card right here. You can see there is a resistor right there. It's that blue colored resistor. Now, on the card that's in this machine, and I kind of got lucky because uh, I had a card in here with a PPC750L, which is a CPU that runs at 2.1 volts, which is a valid voltage for a G4. Um, so comparing the two cards, I figured out that these resistors uh, right here are what control the CPU vCore voltage. So um, right now it's got, I believe that is a 4.5K ohm resistor somewhere around there. Um, 
And in order to get this card down to a 2.1 or 2.0 volts uh, core voltage, we need to add a second resistor here and replace this upper resistor here. So we need to put on a 10 kilo ohm resistor on the top or there in parallel, so it doesn't really matter which uh, side you put it on. But we need one 10 kilo ohm resistor and a second um, 28 kilo ohm resistor. And uh, that gives us a net uh, resistance, since they're both in parallel, of 7.3 kilo ohms, which will bring down the voltage of CPU V core to 2.0 volts, which is exactly what we want. So, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do first is I'm going to source some resistors we can put here. Uh, I'll probably get them off of a dead uh, MacBook logic board because I'm sure that has the values that I need. And uh, yeah, once I get those resistors off, uh, we'll go ahead and resume the video and I'll show you the process of replacing that resistor uh, with the two resistors of the proper values. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this board down in the basement and we'll go ahead and begin the process of uh, replacing those resistors. So I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, I've got the board down here and we are now ready to begin soldering. Um, so I have already removed uh, a couple uh, resistors from a MacBook motherboard. Now, uh, they're right here and as you can see, they're quite small. They are slightly smaller than the original resistors. Um, however, they will should work just fine, assuming they will reach between both pads. Uh, which I think they will. Um, now I couldn't find a 28k ohm resistor on the board so I ended up just using a 30k ohm resistor and in this case that is actually optimal because uh, the PowerPC 7400 CPU is actually designed to run at about 1.8 to 1.9 volts and uh, with a 10k ohm and 28k ohm resistor uh, the voltage on this card was about 2.1 volts. So I think with a slightly higher resistance in there, uh, that should drop the voltage down to at least 2.0, if not 1.9 or 1.8 volts. Uh, and of course, we will be testing that before soldering on uh, the uh, G4 CPU. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is put the camera in the tripod and uh, begin the process of soldering these two resistors onto the board. All right, so we've got the board ready to begin soldering here. Um, so of course, the first thing we're gonna do is apply some flux to it. Alright, now we'll take the hot air gun and uh, begin removing the uh, original resistor. Let me actually turn the air down slightly here. And that was a lot of flux, but... Alright, there's that resistor. So, it is quite a bit bigger uh, than the uh, resistors I'll be putting on the board, but like I said, that sh hopefully shouldn't be an issue. Grab our second resistor here. There we go. And as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't really matter um, which resistor is in which position because they're in parallel. All right, so as you can see there, the resistors are now in place. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a close-up shot of that so you can kind of see what I did here. So yeah, as you can see, the resistors are way smaller than the uh, original one was. Uh, however, they should work just fine. They have the same tolerance and the same, uh, they were on, uh, I think one was on the 18 point, point uh, whatever volt rail on the board, and the other was on like a uh, 12 volt rail. So they should be more than beefy enough to uh, handle uh, whatever current will be passing through them. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and plug this into the iMac and get some voltage measurements of a CPU V core. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready and uh, resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, I've got the other CPU card installed into the system now that we just performed uh, that resistor modification on. Um, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is turn on the system and measure the voltage of CPU V core. Now, the way we do that on this card is, all you have to do is measure across uh, these uh, capacitors right here. These are just the uh, bypass capacitors for the CPU, and uh, that's where uh, CPU V-Core will be present. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera in the tripod here, 
And uh, then we will uh, go ahead and uh, measure the voltage on one of those capacitors. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my multimeter out here so you can see what's going on. All right, you can see my multimeter is on and we are now ready to begin testing the voltage. Let's go ahead and turn the system on. All right, as you can hear, the system's running now, so we can go ahead and put one probe on one side and measure our CPU V-Core. And as you can see there, we are getting 2.07 volts, which is exactly what we want. So that means we should now be ready to install the G4 CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and resume the video and we'll begin the process of reballing and soldering on the G4 CPU. All right, so as you can see here, I've got our target G4 CPU that we're gonna be soldering onto this board. Um, so of course, the first thing we need to do is desolder it off of this board and uh, solder it or uh, reball it so we can then begin to solder it on this board. Um, now I've actually already shown this process in a previous video. Uh, you can actually just go and look for the video uh, where I did this same exact G4 upgrade process uh, to a PowerBook G3 Pismo and uh, you can see the entire reballing process there. Now I don't, I'm not actually going to film it a second time because I think it would be quite redundant. Uh, but basically what we're going to be doing, just like in that video, we're going to be desoldering this CPU, removing all the residual solder, and uh, soldering on new solder balls using a BGA stencil, and uh, then we will be ready to solder the chip onto this board uh, once we remove this CPU, which I will actually show the process of uh, removing and cleaning the pads of this CPU board. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that done and resume the video once this chip is reballed. All right, so as you can see here, I've just finished the process of reballing the PowerPC 7400 CPU. Um, I did take it off of a CPU card, of course, uh, because you can't really get them anywhere else. Uh, I took it off of this one. This was a uh, 400 megahertz sawtooth card. And uh, yeah, it had a uh, 400 megahertz PowerPC uh, 7400 CPU, which is, is exactly what we need. Go ahead and take it off here so I can show you what it looks like. Yeah, as you can see, it is a 7400 and it has a clock speed of 400 megahertz. Now, when I solder this on to the IMAX card, I am probably just going to run it at 333 megahertz, and that's simply due to the poor cooling that's in uh, these older IMAX G3 systems. Now, it may be sufficient enough to run it at 400, but I'm just going to clock it at 333 just to be safe, and uh, it really shouldn't harm the performance all that much. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get the CPU card from the iMac uh, ready on the board preheater, and then we will begin the process of removing the original PowerPC 750 CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and get the camera on the tripod and resume the video. All right, so as you can see, I've got the uh, uh, iMac CPU card on the board preheater here. So of course the first step is to apply some flux around the perimeter of the chip. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Alright, so now that we've gotten our flux applied, we can go ahead and begin the process of removing the chip. So I'm going to go ahead and align the hot air nozzle. And now we can begin removing the chip. Alright, so the chip is now ready to come off the board, so I'm going to go ahead and move the hot air nozzle out of the way and lift up the chip. So here we go. So as you can see, it came off nice and cleanly. Uh, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is get this on my soldering table 
and begin removing all of the residual solder. So I'm going to go ahead and get it on my table and resume the video. Alright, so now we are ready to begin the process of removing all the residual solder. Um, so of course the first thing we want to do is apply some more flux, just a little bit more. Just like so. And now what we'll go ahead and do is just take my soldering iron here and add some uh, new solder to the board while removing all of these uh, larger solder chunks. Uh, so go ahead and do that here. Alright, and that looks pretty good. Uh, so now what we'll go ahead and do is go back over it again with the solder wick and uh, remove the rest of the solder. Alright, so there we go, that looks good. Um, so now what we'll go ahead and do is clean all of this residual flux off of the pads, and then we can get, begin the process of soldering the G4 CPU onto the board. So I'll go ahead and resume the video, and uh, we'll begin soldering the chip. Alright, so as you can see, uh, we have now gotten all the flux cleaned up off of the board. Um, so now what we can do is just apply a small amount of new flux to the board, and uh, then from there we can begin the process of soldering the chip onto the board. Alright, that should be pretty good. Um, so now I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel and wipe off the excess. All right, and that looks pretty good. Um, so now what we'll go ahead and do is place on our G4 CPU, and uh, then we'll begin soldering it onto the board. Alright, and that looks to be aligned pretty well, so now we'll go ahead and place on the hot air nozzle and then begin heating the chip. and that looks like the chip has soldered on successfully. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn off the hot air, let the board cool down, and then we'll be ready for testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video here and resume it once the board is cooled down and uh, we will begin the process of testing it. All right, so as you can see, I have the modified CPU card installed now with the G4 CPU soldered on. Uh, as you can see, I've also got a memory module installed um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is plug the system in, turn it on, and see if it sounds like it's about to boot off of its hard disk. Uh, and that will give us a good indication of whether or not it actually posts or not. So uh, I don't actually have the speaker plugged in because the cable's uh, too short to plug it into the logic board while it's out here. However, listening for the hard drive, 
uh, reading the OS should be clue enough that it is working. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on using the keyboard and uh, we'll see what happens. And it sounds like it's accessing the hard disk. And yes, it is. It is definitely booting. Yep, you can definitely hear it booting right now. So that means uh, the CPU is not even getting that hot either. It is, of course, only running at 233 megahertz at this point. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the system here. Um, and now what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, change the PLL configuration of this CPU card. And that will basically uh, set the clock speed to what I want it to be. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a 400 megahertz PowerPC G4 CPU. However, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and clock it at 333 megahertz, uh, just because A, I know that PLL configuration already because my other CPU card is set for that. And B, because I think down clocking it slightly uh, will help the cooling a lot, and uh, as you can see here, uh, this heatsink is not exactly the largest thing in the world. So, yeah, I just I'm gonna go ahead and down clock it a little bit just to keep uh, it cool with this little heatsink. But a G4 at 333 megahertz should definitely be a lot faster than a G3 at 333 megahertz. So I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, my camera back in the tripod, and we'll begin the process of uh, changing the PLL configuration. All right, as you can see, I've got uh, my CPU cards down here. Uh, so right here, we've got the original 333 megahertz card that came in my machine. Uh, and right here, we've got the one we just put the G4 on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply copy the PLO configuration, which are these series of four resistors right there in the little uh, white square there. And I'm gonna make them, uh, make the ones on this board uh, look like the ones on this board. So it's uh, top, bottom, top, top, and uh, this one's currently top, 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 bottom. So all I need to do is move this last one up one and this second one uh, down one. So uh, yeah, this last one up one and uh, the second one down one, and it will be the exact same configuration as that one. And uh, like I said, this is, of course, the 333 megahertz card. Um, so let me go ahead and get the camera and the tripod, and we'll begin setting the PLO configuration. All right, so this might be a little bit difficult to see, but uh, as you can see here, we've got uh, the board right here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some flux uh, to all these PLO configuration resistors. Just like so. And uh, from there, we'll go ahead and begin uh, setting the configuration. Let's go ahead and grab my hot air gun here. Position the camera a little bit. And uh, now we'll go ahead and just copy the PLO configuration from this card over to this one. Alright, and there we go. Let's go ahead and turn off my hot air station here. And let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So as you can see here, we've now got the PLO configuration resistors set exactly as they are on this card. So you can see they are in the exact configuration. So that should now clock the G4 CPU to 333 megahertz which should run just uh, just fine with the stock uh, iMac G3 heatsink. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this card installed into the iMac G3, fully reassemble the system, and then we'll be able to test it uh, and see how it runs. So I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so I've now gotten the iMac completely reassembled with the G4 CPU installed. So let's go ahead and power it on. And of course it chimes. And the 
display is now warming up. Guess I lost my startup disk setting because the PRAM battery is dead. Uh, but as you can see, the system is now booting. So I guess I'll go ahead and pause the video here uh, while the system starts up and then once it boots up we'll go ahead and take a look at the system. Alright, so as you can see the machine has booted so let's go ahead and take a look at System Profiler. And look at that, we now have a PowerPC G4 CPU detected and it is running at 333 megahertz. So that means it is... Uh, detecting the CPU just fine. So let's go ahead and open up uh, Gauge Pro here. We can take a look at uh, more information. So as you can see here, it is uh, running at only 30 degrees Celsius. So it actually is running really cool. So I might actually be able to uh, clock this up to its full 400 megahertz and not have any problems. Uh, but yeah, for right now, I'm just gonna keep it at 333. Um, and as you can see, the L2 cache is detected as well. So, that has been the upgrade of this iMac G3 to a PowerPC G4 CPU. Hope you enjoyed this video.